In this scene, I have a root node and a camera pivot node that has a mesh child and a camera child. You can ignore the floor and tile grid meshes nodes. The camera pivot node has a Y translation of 1 and a Y rotation of 45. The mesh origin node has an all around translation of 0 and a Y rotation of 45 because I think it looks cool and keeps to the perspective of the scene. The origin mesh is only there to mark the origin of the camera pivot. The camera has an orthogonal projection with a size of 30. It has a Y translation of 75 and a Z translation of 75. And it has a negative 45X rotation so that it's actually angled down at our level. To move the camera, I use keyboard input to move the camera pivot spatial. I'm not actually moving the camera itself, Rather, I'm moving the spatial that the camera is a child of. And of course, to do this, I'm using GDScript. I'm using the Z basis vector of the camera pivot to direct the movement of the camera pivot. The speed is adjusted by the navigation speed variable. I invert the vector for forward movement. I use the vector for backward movement. And then I use the cross product of the vector for side to side movement with key A and D. To rotate the camera, I rotate the camera pivot spatial using the custom input mappings rotate left and rotate right. Again, when I rotate the camera, I'm not rotating the camera itself, rather I'm rotating the camera pivot spatial that the camera is a child of. If I go to project, project settings, and my input map, I scroll down and I can see that I've mapped rotate left to key Q and rotate right to key E. To zoom the camera in or out, I have created another set of custom input map that tie the actions zoom in and zoom out to the mouse wheel. Mouse wheel input is used to resize the camera via these flow controls. If the camera size is larger than 5, reduce the camera size to zoom in. If the camera size is less than 100, increase the camera size to zoom out. Additionally, I have made the camera movement speed proportional to the camera size. The smaller the size, the slower the movement speed and vice versa, the larger the camera size, the faster the camera speed. If I didn't do this or kept the movement speed constant, it wouldn't scale properly with the zoom in or zoom out. I could be zoomed in and the camera would move too quickly, or I could zoom out and the camera would move too slowly. So if we run our scene, we get this, the movement, the rotation, and then our zoom feature. If you're wondering about the pixelized viewport, I've set the viewport resolution to be proportional to the camera size. Scrolling with the mouse wheel calls the adjust viewport size function, which sets the value of viewport resolution and sets the size of the viewport down here. So the camera size right here is divided by 100, and that gets us a value of 0 to 1, which is multiplied by the viewport resolution variance, which I have set up here. To be 600 and that is offset by the viewport minimum which I have also set up here to be 200 and that just ensures that the overall size of the viewport will be between 200 and 800. Now when the size of the viewport changes the signal size changed is emitted which calls adjust display resolution function that I have defined right here and this also sets the size of the viewport this might seem a little redundant but it ensures that the viewport size is set correctly upon resizing the window. And that's about all there is to it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggested improvements, please leave them in the comments. Have a wonderful day.